Hi, my name is uh, Pastor X. Lee Miguel of Christ's Heritage Church. Thank you for visiting our YouTube channel. Uh, it is our prayer that our preaching videos would benefit you in your Christian walk and it would benefit you in your ministry with others and especially your local church. However, if you are a part of a local church, if you are a member of a local church, please um, uh, worship with them every Lord's Day. Please participate in the gathering. And if you have any questions about theology or, or the Bible, please reach out to your local church pastor. We praise God for technology and we hope that uh, uh, this video would benefit you. Thank you. As mentioned a while ago, uh, today is uh, our Reformation Day. And as you know, Martin Luther, kanina na, na bahagi sa atin sa morning sermon, yung patungkol kay Martin Luther, that he was this catalyst of uh, Reformation, of the Reformation, unang-una sa Europe, but also it extended uh, ngayon, no? uh, that we are experiencing no? yung freedom na yun because of what they have done in the Reformation era. You know, Martin Luther was a big threat sa papist, sa papist religion nung time niya. Uh, yung mga ginawa niyang works, technically, threat yun para sa Roman Catholicism. Especially sa Pope. No? Nung kumalat yung works ni Martin Luther, he saw Martin Luther as a big threat sa Roman Catholicism. Hindi lang sa religion, but most especially sa kanyang posisyon bilang a Pope. Kasi if Martin Luther did not recant his works, uh, maraming followers ni Martin Luther ang talagang magsasabi na false ang mga doktrina na tinuro ng, ng Pope ng time na yon, who was Pope Leo X, even the, the long line of Popes, even before Pope Leo X. No? So technically, what Martin Luther is doing unconsciously, ay, he's technically putting a stop doon sa papal line na ito. No? So, and that is exactly what happened in the Reformation. Although the line of papacy continues up to this time, as we know, it must actually must worse pa ngayon ang Roman Catholicism compared noon, people's eyes were opened to the truth about that Antichrist line, that line of popes. Now, in Scripture, there's also an unbelieving line. However, God did not immediately put a stop Rather, he allowed this line to exist to accomplish his sovereign purpose. Hindi ito yung line ng mga popes, but this is the ungodly line of Cain. Turn with me to Genesis chapter 4, verses 16 to 24. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain knew his wife. And she conceived and bore Enoch. When he built a city, he called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So Enoch was born Erod, and Erod fathered Mehujael, and Mehujael fathered Methushael, and Methushael fathered Lamech. And Lamech took two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah. Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwell in tents and have livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of all those who play the lyre and pipe. Zillah also bore Tubal Cain. He was the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. The sister of Tubal Cain was Naama. Lamech said to his wives, Ada and Zillah, hear my voice. You wives of Lamech, listen to what I say. I have killed a man for wounding me, a young man for striking me. If Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. So we see here, Cain, heeding the call of Genesis chapter 1 of God, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Go, live your life, cultivate creation, build a nation. And that is basically what Cain did. He built a nation. He built a city. 
And during that time, when people build a city, it is a walled city. Actually, if you go to Jerusalem now, ang city of Jerusalem, ang old city ay walled. Okay? So, it was a, technically, it was a protected city. No? Yung city ni Cain. And even there, makikita natin dun, yung, dun pa rin, no? reflected pa rin yung fear ni Cain of being murdered by uh, building a protected and walled city. Even the ungodly line of Cain, in a way, was protected by the walls. Now, pwede nating tanungin, Teka, why is God allowing this? Pati nakayaan ng Panginoon nito. Why did He allow even the ungodly line of Cain to continue living? Let me give you two reasons. Unang-una, we can see how God used the ungodly line to invent what? Tents? Music? Naging bento sila ng mga musical instruments and even things na ginagamit for building more cities? Clearly, yung passage, it tells us that these things originated from the descendants of Cain. And these things are what? They are useful to societies. Even up to now. God has given these descendants of Cain gifts. Gifts that He freely gives to all mankind. Yun yung tinatawag nating common grace. Common grace. Para makik- mababasa natin yun sa Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. Ibig sabihin noon, common grace, this is something that God gifts to men, to all people, whether you are a believer or an unbeliever. Okay? Matthew chapter 5, verse 45. Sabi sa atin, For He makes His Son rise on the evil and on the good. Meaning, God allows the Son to rise. Para saan? Para sa ikabubuti ng mga masasamang tao, even yung mga mabubuting tao. And also, it says there, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Ibig sabihin, ang Diyos ay nagpapaulan, syempre para may mainom din ng tao, ginagawa na yon para saan? Para sa mga just at sa mga unjust. Common grace. This is grace because these things also are undeserved hindi natin deserve ito na pinoprovide tayo ng Panginoon to get water from the rain by our Creator. We don't deserve that. That is grace. And this is common kasi this is something that all creatures receive. And so dito sa passage na to, God has given them gifts as well. Hindi porke unbeliever ang isang tao, hindi gifted. Kita natin yun sa passage na to. Even these unbelievers possessed abilities that were useful to society. That's my first one. First reason why God allowed these descendants to live. But not only that. Secondly, we can see in this passage how evil immediately increased. Ang bilis ng pag-increase ng kasamaan. God allows the ungodly Cain to leave his presence, to build a nation, and to have a family. And his family, his descendants, as we can see, are even worse than him. They're worse. So two reasons. Common grace, and there is that increase of evil. So God shows us in his common grace, God shows us his common grace in the lives of the ungodly people, and then he shows us that he permits evil. Now, the question is why. That is my message this morning, this afternoon. Saving grace is magnified through God's common grace and His permission of evil. Ang karaniwang biyaya ng Panginoon at ang pagpapahintulot niya ng kasamaan ay mas nagbibigay linaw, liwanag sa kanyang biyaya ng kaligtasan. How is saving grace magnified as we consider God's common grace? Yun yung titingnan natin sa unang point. Common grace. Karaniwang biyaya. How is saving grace magnified as we look at God's consenting godlessness, permitting evil? That is my last point. Consenting godlessness. Pinayagang manatili ang kasamaan. Let us consider the first one. Common grace. So in the line of Cain, we see the skills of his descendants emphasized. No? 
emphasize yung mga abilities ng anak ni Cain. Kung ikukumpara natin siya sa Genesis chapter 5, no one from the son of, sons of Seth were given such emphasis sa kanila mga ability. I'm sure may mga gifted sa kanila, pero hindi pinakita ng scripture whether si Noah or whether si Enoch ay napakagaling uh, na, na gumawa ng, ng bahay or whatever, pero emphasize dito sa descendants ni Cain yung kanilang mga abilities. Verse 20, si Jabal, he was the father of those who dwell in tents and, hi- and have livestock. Ibig sabihin dito ng father originator, inventor, siya ang nag ng tents. Okay? Verse 21, si Jubal, he was the father of all those who play the lyre and pipe. Si verse 22, Tubal Cain, he was the forger of all instruments of bronze and iron. So there is this remarkable progress in the development of civilization. It shows us that they pioneered in these great discoveries and inventions. Even to these evil men, they were endowed with gifts. And see, these, these gifts benefit all of us. Nagbe-benefit tayo sa mga gifts nila. Nai-enjoy niyo ba ang music? Meron ba rito may ayaw sa music? We enjoy music not even knowing kung saan nag-originate yung mga instrumentong ito. It came from an ungodly man who was a descendant of an ungodly man. Lahat kayo ay nakatera sa mga bahay? Meron ba ditong hindi nakatera sa bahay? Necessity ang bahay. Genesis 4 tells us, alam mo ba si Jabal ang nag-invento niyan? Jabal invented that. God uses the gifts of everyone, whether a believer or not, to be useful to society. And the ones benefiting from these things are His creation. This is God's common grace. He gives us these things, things that we do not deserve, that's why it's grace. But it's important to note that these things are only helpful to us. And totoo yun, helpful sa ating, sa ating tong mga to. Kahit yung mga abilidad ng mga unbelievers na ito, helpful sa atin para mamuhay tayo sa mundong ito. But see, they are only helpful to us in our earthly lives. The descendants of Cain may seem to be so successful in their lives. They may have prospered materially, but it did not remove their guilt. It did not remove their sins. Hindi yun nawala. It did not produce forgiveness of sins. Cain and even his descendants remain guilty in the sight of God, no matter how great they were. Their progress in civilization helped them, yes. It helped the next generations. Material progress is good. Using our God-given gifts is good. As long as biblical truths are not compromised, enjoying the products of these God-given gifts is good. But the prosperity of the world, the material progress, though great, they are empty apart from the Lord. Common grace, while it is good, does not provide for our eternal need. While they may help us here in this life, and brothers and sisters, sana na-appreciate natin ang common grace ng Panginoon. They don't help us in eternity though. Why? Because it is only the special grace. It is only the saving grace of God that would remove our guilt. And the saving grace is not like His common grace that is for all to enjoy. The saving grace is available only to those whom God has called. It is only the grace of God that saves our souls, that produces forgiveness of sins. Titus chapter 2 verse 11, the grace of God has appeared. 
the grace that we're talking about here is the grace na nagpakita. Nagkatawang tao. Grace personified. Bringing salvation for all people. All people, hindi every person. Dahil alam naman natin na hindi lahat ay masesave. This talks about all types of people. Whether male or female, slave or master, Jew or Gentile, regardless of gender and age. This grace personified brings salvation. Ano pa? Training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age. There is nothing in this world that could train us to be holy and blameless other than this grace that has appeared. No common grace can do that. This grace that became flesh, Titus chapter 2, verses 13 to 14, ang sabi, sino yun? Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. No common grace could do that. Kahit gaano kagaling yung descendants ni Cain, hindi, 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 hindi kayang ibigay nun yung kayang ibigay ni Kristo. We, we, we should uh, distinguish these two types of graces. And yes, we should appreciate the common grace of God. But appreciating the common grace of God should all the more for us appreciate the better grace. The grace that forgives souls. The grace that puts us to the realm of spirit and sanctifies us. We should all the more have a greater appreciation sa saving grace ng Panginoon. This is why I said a while ago, saving grace is magnified through God's common grace. Because the more we see and appreciate itong common grace na to, which by the way, hindi natin madalas na-appreciate. Kumusta yung heart natin na kumain lang tayo ng, ng, ng almusal kanina, na nagpray tayo with, alam yun, marahil naging complacent tayo sa ating prayers, na napaka-habitual ng prayers natin, na walang laman sa puso natin ang pasasalamat natin sa Panginoon. Whenever we say, thank you, Lord, dito sa pagkain na meron, ito'y common grace mo. Na imagine mo kung meron kung trained ang ating puso sa pag-appreciate ng ganitong klaseng mga bagay, how much more? How much more the saving grace of God? When we are reminded every Sunday of the saving grace of God, how much more we, we would appreciate such? If we have an appreciation for the common grace of God, that God provides for us just as how He provides for the unjust, just imagine that. He provides even for people who continuously rebel against Him. If we have an appreciation for the common grace of God, we are recipients of the cultural progress that God Himself has ordained for our benefit. How much more appreciation when we realize that there is a more favored a more special grace that He bestows upon us. The we, tayo na guilty sa ating mga kasalanan, ay pinatawad ng Diyos through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Through faith in His death on the cross, we should have a greater appreciation dito sa saving grace ng Panginoon. Ang kagandahan pa nito, the more, kapag mas naging malalim ang ating appreciation sa saving grace ng Panginoon, naapektuhan ang appreciation natin, even sa common grace ng Panginoon. Yun yung kagandahan nun. So Cain's descendants were indeed gifted men. Yung abilities nila, common grace yun ng Panginoon. Yung abilidad nila, common grace yun ng Panginoon. Yung produkto ng kanilang gifts, common grace yun ng Panginoon dahil even tayo ay naka, nagbe-benefit from that. They use their gifts from uh, for the benefit of all. I mean, of course, for, for them, sa mga descendants ni Cain, unknowingly, na, na, nagbe-benefit even tayo. But they use their gifts para sa kanila mismo. Their own benefit. It didn't earn their redemption, 
no matter how beneficial it was, how righteous their deeds were, these things are just like para sa Diyos. Itong mga gawa nila ay mga polluted garments lamang, mga filthy rugs lamang. Pero kung ikukumpara natin, binigyan ng Diyos ng abilidad ang mga descendants ni Cain and they were really good at it and they use it for their benefit. Tayo mga Kristiyano, binigyan din ng Panginoon ng gift. And para sa ating mga Christians, there is a higher calling dito sa mga gifts na ito. Mas binigyan tayo ng may meaning, mas may purpose ang pagbigay sa atin ng gift hindi katulad ng mga descendants ni Cain to cultivate creation, pero sa atin, merong deeper meaning itong mga gifts na ito na ibinigay din sa atin ng Diyos. Binasa natin yung kanina sa 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 onwards. Let me read again. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another. As good stewards of God's varied grace, whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies, in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to Him belong glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Sa so, tingin niyo ba si, si Jabal? na gumawa ng tent ay ginawa niya yun for the glory of God. Sa so, tingin niyo ba si Jubal na nag-imbento ng mga musical instruments, he did that for God's glory? No. Pero for us Christians, we are called to use these gifts of common grace. Tayo, gamitin itong mga gifts na to for the glory of God. Sabi ni Peter, yung yung first peter chapter 4 that means that you should have in mind no serving one another when you use your god given gifts whatever those are may purpose etong mga gifts na to para sa ikabubuti ng iba sabi pa ni peter whoever speaks ibig sabihin whether you are gifted in words if you are gifted in words in uplifting your brethren sabi pa, whoever serves. So if you are gifted in serving in any way, in any way that would be helpful to your brethren, at ang sinabi ni Peter dito, anong reason? Anong purpose mo? In order that what? In order that in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. See, the line of Cain used their gifts, and yes, it did help society, but they did that. Did they, did they do it for God's glory? No. Did they do it having in mind to serve one another so that God may be glorified? No. Because they didn't have an appreciation of God's saving grace in the first place. Because they didn't know the saving grace of God in the first place. Ang challenge ko sa bawat isa, add to what was written there in your handouts, have a greater appreciation sa saving grace ng Panginoon. Alam mo kung bakit kailangan mas, mas greater ang appreciation natin? Imagine mo kung, kung ganun ang tingin natin sa saving grace ng Panginoon. Imagine natin ang ating disposition, ang ating mga puso papunta sa araw ng Lord's Day. Imagine natin yung, yung pagbabago ng puso natin. Kung meron tayong ganitong klaseng appreciation sa kanyang saving grace. That Sundays will not just be Sundays. It is the Lord's Day. Kung saan talagang, red, talagang sobrang tatanggapin natin ang bountiful blessings ng Panginoon. Sa sobrang appreciative natin sa kanya. So yun ang challenge ko, have a greater appreciation of the saving grace of God and also knowing that we also are given gifts by God. Aim. Use that gift. Aim to minister grace through gifts to one another for the glory of God. 
Yes, yung greatness nila sa agriculture would be useful to this life now, but it wouldn't be acceptable to God. Yung kagalingan nila sa music would be okay, but it won't give them sing. It would it won't get them to sing songs to the Lord from the heart. So have a greater appreciation sa saving grace na meron tayo. That because of the saving grace, our gifts have a have a better purpose. Unlike the line of Cain, gifted as they were, use their giftings not appreciating where it came from, not doing it in the service of men for the glory of God. But now, Christian, the gifts given to us are used for ministry. You are to minister to your brother and to your sister in Christ. If these wonderful gifts received by the unbelieving line of Cain benefited mankind, how much more will it benefit the church of Christ? When everyone who's gifted to speak is able to edify a struggling brother or a sister in Christ. And I'm not just talking about gift in preaching, gift in just speaking, edifying, encouraging a brother or a sister in Christ. That is a gift. That is a spiritual gift given to a church member. How much more would it benefit the church when everyone who's gifted with technology is able to use it for the use of the church? For the betterment of church activities or even worship? How much more would it benefit the church when everyone who's the, who has the gift of generosity is able to help a Christian in need? Mas may meaning yung ganung klaseng gift. Those who have the gifts of counseling use their gifts to help the struggling brother or sister. Meron ka bang gift to, na napapansin mo ba as you talk to many members of this church na a lot of people come to you because they recognize that you are really, you are, you are able to encourage them. Meron ba sa inyong ganun dito? Now, do you have that gift? Do it also to your struggling wife, to your struggling husband. Hindi lang din sa church. How much more would it benefit the church when everyone who has the gift of singing use their voices to sing praises to the Lord, knowing that in singing, it edifies the church. See our highest higher calling in using these gifts, an unbeliever may use or, 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 or his or her gift to cultivate creation, to preserve his or her family, whatever gift that is, a believer has a much higher calling. It is for the building up of the church. Ito yung, pinak- ito yung sikreto dito. We're not using these gifts for ourselves. Sabi ni Peter, it is for others. Serving one another. Bakit? Because we have a greater model. It is none other than Jesus Christ who gave himself up for us. Who died on the cross for us. Who ministered not to himself, but to others. Pero pastor, I don't know what my gifts are. Kapati, that's the beauty of the church. That's the beauty of having guidance from members. That's the beauty of having pastoral guidance. As you spend more time with the body of Christ, the body of Christ would help you discern these things. Matutulungan ka ng body of Christ. Kilala niyo na si William Carey. Kanina nabanggit ko siya sa Sunday School. Siya yung missionary sa India. Um, and I'm sure probably you, you, you know this story already. Isa sa mga close niyang pastors ay si Andrew Fuller. Andrew Fuller is known to have that gift of generosity. In fact, hindi magagawa ni William Curry, Carey lahat ng kanyang ministry if not for Andrew Fuller. And take note, grabe ang, 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 ang ministry ni William Carey sa India. Napakaraming kristyano ang nag-call sa name ng Panginoon at naligtas. But take note, he acknowledges the help of Andrew Fuller who supported him. That's why he was able to go to India and live there and minister 
to many people. Sabi pa nga ni William Carey, um, kay, kay, kay Andrew Fuller, I will go down if you will hold the rope. Bababa si William Carey kung hahawakan ni Andrew Fuller yung lube. I mean, many of us now are not ready to even hold the rope. Ready ba tayo, mga Christians? We are called to help one another, to serve one another, not to glorify ourselves, but to bring glory to the Lord. Our model, none other than Jesus Christ. So if you're aware of the gifts, of your gifts, and take note, all of us have gifts. Yun yung sinabi ni Paul, eh, sa Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. So if you are aware of these, of your gifts, are we using it to build up others? Are we using it so that God would be glorified and not us? Are we using it so that Jesus Christ would be known? My last point is consenting godlessness. So the evil that we saw from Cain, dumoble, nagmultiply yung kasamaan ni Cain. Unang-una, Cain names the city after his son. This is a sign of self-idolatry. Second, we have here the first case of polygamy. Verse 19, And Lamech took two wives, si Ada sa Kasizila. Pangatlo, in verse 23, Lamech's, Lamech tells us that he took revenge by what? killing someone who just wounded him. And malinaw ito sa previous verses na ayaw ng Panginoon ng vengeance. Anong ginawa ni Lamech? Pinatay niya yung nakasugat sa kanya. Ano pa? Pang-apat, he mocks God. He mocks God by repeating God's statement for Cain. At sabi niya, if Cain's revenge is sevenfold, then Lamech's is seventy-sevenfold. Who is this guy? para mag, mag, magbigay ng such law. If Cain's murderer will receive a more severe punishment, if someone murders me, it will be more severe than the punishment given by God. Mas matindi ang punishment na ibibigay ko. Now again, babalik tayo sa question, why would God allow this? God allowed this evil, permitted this evil, multiplied. Now, let me be clear, very important ito, that this, this is important that God is not a sinner. This does not mean that God is a sinner. It doesn't mean that He approves of evil or He approves of sin. Malinaw yun sa James chapter 1, verse 13. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. James is saying, hindi niyo pwedeng sabihin na ang Panginoon sa Kanya, Siya ang nag ng kasalanan. Dahil kung siya ang nag ng kasalanan, then siya ang author ng kasalanan. He didn't cause it. He didn't author it. As we know, God is holy, holy, holy. And God in His providence, kaya niyang pigilan ang evil whenever He wants to. He could have stopped the brothers of Joseph from beating him up. He could have stopped the Jews in Lystra from stoning Paul. In Acts chapter 14, verse 19, sabi doon, yung Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and having persuaded the crowds, they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city. Grabe yung, grabe yung nangyari kay Paul. Tapos sabi rito, supposing that he was dead. See, clearly, God allowed these things. He permitted the existence of evil. He permitted Cain to build a city and have his own ungodly descendants who will then mock God. Clear picture here is that sin exists, evil exists by God's permission. He permitted these things for a purpose. Balik tayo kay Joseph. Hinayaan ng Panginoon na mabugbog si Joseph. Genesis 50. Chapter 50, verse 20, As for you, sabi ni Joseph sa kanyang mga kapatid, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. To bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. 
God allowed what happened to Joseph so that more people could be saved in his time. Joseph was used by God for the what? For the preservation of Israel's line. Kundi namatay sa famine ang line of Israel. And why is that important? It is through Israel where Jesus Christ was born. God has a better purpose. When Paul was stoned, the next day he preached the gospel. And many became disciples. Why was it important? Acts chapter 14 verse 22 tells us, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith, and, saving, and saying that through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. Sinasabi ni Paul dito, the trials would come as we follow Christ. And they should know all these things so that they won't fall away from the faith. Anong, anong pinakagrabing tribulation ang pwedeng example na mapakita niya sa Jews na, okay, totoo nga na nangyayari ang tribulation sa mga followers ni Christ. You get to be stoned to death, just like Paul. And God allowed that to happen for the new disciples to understand how it is to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. See, things may be unclear to us why certain evil exists, but clearly God has a purpose. A better purpose. Imagine if God showered his des the descendants of Cain with his saving grace at that time. We wouldn't know how bad sin was. How bad sin is. Hindi natin malalaman. The real character of sin would be concealed. If that's what happened, will you even cry mercy for God? Will you even cry for mercy? Will you even cry out to God? You know, in Romans chapter 5, Paul was saying that when Adam sinned, all sin. And during that time, nung time daw ni Adam, nung siya nagkasala, up to the time of Moses, sins were, in a sense, not measured. Hindi daw measured ang kasalanan. Romans chapter 5 verse 13 tells us, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted when there is no law. How, how would we know specifically which one is sin? Nung, wal, nung hindi pa binibigay yung Ten Commandments. How would we know the gravity of our sins? Nung hindi pa binibigay yung Ten Commandments. And so God made known to everyone His law. The Decalogue. Pero yung mga tao, instead of being obedient to the law that was given to them, to, to them lalo silang naging worse. So technically, before the law was given, given, we were simply sinners. But when the law was given, we were just outright actual breakers of the law. That's why Paul is saying in Romans chapter 5, verse 20, Now the law came in to increase the trespass. So in this sense, sin increased. It doesn't mean that we became worse sinners, worse na talaga tayo even before it. Pero after being aware of the law, mas overtly disobedient tayo. And Paul continued, Romans chapter 5, verse 20, But where sin increased, grace abounded all the more. See, the more we see and we realize the increase of evil, the more beautiful the saving grace, the gospel of Christ, becomes. Mas lalo nating na-appreciate ang grace ng Panginoon. That is why I mentioned a while ago, saving grace is magnified through God's permission of sin. If we realize how we have been sinning against God, how we have been secured in our sins and wickedness, and then when we remember how Christ died on the cross for our sins, how Christ was the one who did the opposite of what we did, how he did not sin, and how he himself was the substitute instead of us, then again, we will have a greater appreciation of the saving grace of God. 
that God provides for us just as how He provides for the unjust, that we are recipients of the, again, of the common grace of God, but more so, knowing kung gano tayo kasinner, ka, ka, kasinful, mas tumaas palalo, mas tataas palalo ang appreciation natin sa saving grace niya. Kung yung common grace niya dapat magbigay sa atin ng mas appreciation sa, sa saving grace ng Panginoon, what more pag naintindihan natin kung gano kabigat ang ating mga kasalanan. Alam niyo yung scale? Kapag sobrang bigat nung, nung nasa kaliwa, tataas yung kanan. Kung gano din kabigat yung understanding natin of sin, dapat ganun din kataas ang ating view of the cross of Christ. So challenge ko sa lahat, let the thought of the evils of this world magnify in our minds the greater hope we have in Jesus Christ. Let the thought of the increasing evil in this world allow your minds to always look to Christ. Because Christ alone is the remedy for this evil world. He is the, he is the remedy alone for the increasing evil in this world. The problem is that when we sin, when we see sin, we sometimes have different hopes. Meron tayong different saviors. We see evil in civil authorities. We immediately think of a human, a candidate that would prevent this evil. Not knowing na kahit sinong kandidato ay katulad nating sinner. Na hindi mesaya ang hinahanap natin. Dumating na ang mesaya. I'm not saying na hindi tayo maging discerning. We should. We see sin in our homes. We immediately think of ourselves as saviors. I'm not saying that we can't be used by God for reproof, for loving rebuke. By all means, do that. Lovingly rebuke those who sin against God. But don't do it in a way as if the saving relies on your own hands. Because if that is the case, you will soon find disappointment in your own ability. Na wag na tayo lumayo when we sometimes feel that our sins are increasing. And brothers and sisters, that happens even sa ating sariling sanctification. Na sometimes, naisip natin na paurong ang sanctification natin. Alam natin, sa pag-aaral natin, sanctification should be progressive, nagpo-progress tayo. Pero kapatid, nangyayari din yung minsan naisip natin, paurong tayo. That's why sometimes, we question even our own faith. But let me encourage you. Nangyayari talaga yon even sa toong kristyano. Pero may pag-asa tayo. Kung, ikaw, kung tayo ay tunay na kristyano. Now, nangyayari yon sometimes we feel na nag increase ang sin natin. Ang nangyayari, nagkahanap din tayo ng ibang savior. Sin of lust? What is your remedy? What is your savior? sa sin of lust. Ah, let me do things that would take my mind off these sinful thoughts. Let me stop myself from browsing too much. I mean, there are practical things that we can do. Right? But if we think that that would ultimately save us from the sin of lust, really? How about being renewed daily by the word of Christ? Sin of anger. What is your remedy? Let me spend some time alone. Let me watch some Netflix so that I could forget. Have my own time. Yun ba? Ang tingin natin. Again, walang masama dito. May mga practical solutions. But if we think that ultimately these things would save us from our sins, magkakamali tayo. Let the thought of the increasing sin, even in ourselves, magnify in our minds that we have a greater hope, and that is Christ. Sabi nga ni, ito, lagi itong inuulit ni Stephen Lawson, pero itong quote na ito, nanggaling talaga kay Robert Murray McChaney. Sabi niya, for every look at your own sin, take ten looks at the beauty 
of Christ. What is your remedy, Christian? Who is your remedy, Christian? See, the more we see the wretchedness in our hearts, the more we should see the beauty of the gospel. The more we should see the wonder of the cross. The more we should see the greatness of Christ's life. The more we should see the magnificence of his death. The more we should see the majestic resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the gracious and loving intercession of Jesus Christ. So, kapatid, look to Christ. We have a greater hope in Him. We are called to a greater appreciation of God's saving grace because it is better than common grace and it is the only answer to this increasing evil world. May the Word of God enrich our knowledge of Him and may it stir us to live in light of these truths. Let us pray. Great God and gracious Father, salamat po, Panginoon, sa inyong salita ngayong hapon. Panginoon, salamat, O Lord, sa inyong kabutihan, sa inyong goodness, sa inyong pagmamahal, sa inyong grasya, which we always experience, the air that we breathe, yung lupa na pinaglalakaran namin, yung shelter na meron kami, yung pamilya na meron kami, yung pagkain na nagsusustain ng aming mga katawan, yung aming mga trabaho that you use for us para kami ay uh, ma-preserve ang aming mga pamilya at sarili. Oh Lord, help us to have a greater appreciation of your common grace. And let that appreciation grow all the more and magnify, Panginoon, ang inyong better grace, yung saving grace na inibinigay in- niyo sa amin and that is the person and work of Jesus Christ. Salamat, Panginoon. And Lord, I pray, O Lord, that in our struggle with sin, na ma-realize namin, O Lord, na hindi namin kaya ito na, na patayin ng kami lamang. O Lord, I pray that we always look to our example, who is Jesus Christ, that we always look to our greater hope, who is Christ, who, who died on the cross and who is alive. So salamat, Panginoon, naway ang mga hearts namin would be trained to have a greater appreciation sa inyong grace. Maraming maraming pong salamat. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.